Good morning, everyone. That doesn't get you pumped. I mean, that's, that's some pump-up music, right? Go lift some weights. Go do some push-ups. Y'all can get down on the floor do some push-ups if you want real quick. Uh, Slow-mo, paint, you know, that's super cool. Anyway, my name's Matt. I'm glad you guys are here this morning and that you're with us. Um, we are in the middle of our sermon series called True Colors, and we are looking at characteristics and things that should be evident and real in our life if we are going to call ourselves a disciple of Christ, a follower of Jesus. Arthur spoke last week on the topic of love and love through hospitality, the importance of opening our home uh, to those that are either strangers or even brothers and sisters in Christ, and how important that is if we're going to call ourselves Christians, right? We see that all through the Bible. Um, people used to have what's called a Christ room, and it's literally a room set up simply for people to come and stay in it, right? And so today we get to talk about surrender. Everybody say surrender with me. Surrender, very good, a little crowd participation. And uh, I believe as a Christ follower, a Christian, God calls us to surrender. He calls us to surrender. William Booth, the father of the Salvation Army, he has this quote, and he says, the greatness of a man's power is in the measure of his surrender. I love this quote because it's, it's not talking about the greatness of a man's power is in the money that he has or the things that he has accumulated or the amount of employees that report to him. It's not how big your house is or the stuff you got, right? It is in the measure of your ability to take all that you have in your entire life and say, here, Lord, that's the greatness of a man's Power. You could say it like this, a true color of a Christ follower is a lifestyle of surrender, of, of letting go and giving yourself to the Lord. Jesus calls us to this life, man. It is completely contrary to the world and the system in which we live, and it's even contrary to the very skin and bones that we live in today. It's contrary to our self. So take a minute and turn with me to Luke 22. Uh, we're going to take a look before we get too, too deep into the message here. You know, Jesus calls us to this lifestyle of surrender, but he also himself modeled it while he was here on the earth. So if you got your Bibles, uh, grab them, or if you got your phones, you can go to southcrest.church forward slash notes and follow along there. Or if you have the good old-fashioned paper Bible, you can pull that out as well, all right? Luke 22, and we're going to start. In verse 39, it'll be up here on the screen as well. Uh, Jesus went out, as usual, to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them. He knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Right, if, you, if you're a new Christian and you haven't heard that passage anymore, you might be thinking, what kind of cups you got, man? Is he at a party? Is he drinking a solo cup or just a coffee cup? What kind of cup is he talking about? Why has he got a cup in his hands, right? Well, what he is about to do is he's about to go to the cross. He's about to, to end his life for, to be the ultimate sacrifice for the sins of the entire world. And what's neat about this passage is we actually get to see, we get to peek into his humanity just for a split second and, and understand that Jesus is, he's struggling a little bit here. He understands that he, what he's about to uh, do is going to cost him something. It's about to be very difficult. He's about to go through a lot of pain and anguish. They're about to drive spikes in his hand and a crown of thorns, and he's about to be whipped uh, beyond recognition. And he has to carry this cross uh, to his death. They'll jab a spear in his side and he'll suffocate to death on a cross. And Jesus is saying for a second, he's like, Father, Lord, uh, uh, if you're, you know, listening to me, which I know you are, uh, if you could issue everybody a get out of jail free card right now, this would be great, right? If you just snap your fingers and issue everybody a redo and beam me up, Scotty, take me out of here, that would be awesome because what I'm about to go through is going to stink. It's going to be hard. It's going to be painful. And what does he follow it up with? Yet not my will, but yours be done. What a beautiful picture of surrender. Jesus is saying this isn't going to be comfortable, right? This is going to be hard, but you know what? I trust you, Father. 
I put my life into your hands, and you know what's best for me, so therefore, I surrender to you. It's amazing, right? He understood it was going to cost him something. Surrender's hard. Surrender's hard for me, and if you're in here right now, everybody's probably, yeah, surrender's a little bit difficult, right? I love to be in control. I love to know what I'm doing, right? Surrendering, when we turn our lives over to Jesus, we're basically uh, giving everything up. It goes against the grain of who we are, right? We have these feelings, yet the Lord is telling us to do this. I have these desires and I want these things, but yet, Lord, you're telling me to go and pursue these things. I have these goals, right? I have these benchmarks in my life, this, 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 and this, and I got to hit this by this age and this age and this age, but, Lord, you're telling me to go do this? My attractions, Lord, I'm really attracted to her. I'm really attracted to him. I really want this thing. But you're telling me to pursue something different. Our need for control and our desire for power, we're laying it all down. And as, as humans, especially American humans, man, we want what we want and we're trained to go get it. We're taught to have no restraint. And if you want it, it's yours. Go get it. And Jesus, man, he's saying, it's not the way of the Father. It's not the way of a Christ follower. You know, when we use the words, I surrender, we just got done singing it, and there's lots of songs that say, I surrender all. It's not saying, I surrender some, you know. It's an all thing, right? It's an all or, or nothing kind of a thing. And when we say those things, like, yes, I've surrendered my life to Christ, we know it requires something of us. It requires something of us, right? It's not that I get into this club and I get this really cool card that I get to put it in my, my wallet and all of a sudden, hey, I'm a, I'm a member. Hey, guys, don't forget, I'm a member. No, it costs us something. I just, um, last weekend, I got the privilege of going to walk to Emmaus. Many of you may know what that is. I had a family come to me and approach me and Kathy and sponsor us to go. And uh, if you don't know what it is, it's basically like a student camp weekend retreat for adults. And it was phenomenal. It was amazing. And uh, you get to go, and uh, it's down in Hamilton, Georgia, and you get to spend three or four days in the woods, and you just get to hang out with brothers in Christ, and um, you get to be refreshed and recharged and understand the Lord's love for you. And, and um, it was awesome. It was amazing. Kathy's there right now, and, you know, they do the guys, and then they do girls. Um, and so phenomenal, phenomenal time, and I loved it. Backing up to the moment I got invited to go, I was quite you know, hesitant to go because I was like, I don't know, man, you know, I don't, I don't know if I want to do that, you know, because one of the things that they encourage you to do is they highly encourage you to leave your cell phone home. You're not allowed to wear a watch. You can't take any digital devices, right? And so they're like, yeah, you, you can't take this. I'm like, I can't take this. What are you talking about? Like, this is attached to me. Like, I can't physically remove it from my hand kind of thing, right? And so I was just real hesitant about it. Like, I don't know, man. I, I, I know what I'm doing and when I'm doing it, right? I live and die by a calendar. I live and die by email. And, uh, you know, I know when I'm eating lunch and who I'm eating with and what time I got to be home and when the soccer game is and what Kathy's doing. And we got a, two calendars. We're synced up together and we're watching it. And, and uh, you know, I got to check the weather, see what I need to, you know, if I need an umbrella or what, what can I do outside. Or, or I got to like some bicycle pics on Instagram every now and again, right? Like, I need my phone, and so as the Lord began to work and as people were obviously probably praying for me because uh, I needed it, um, I, I went, right? I, I had to leave the phone here, take off my watch, and spend four days completely disconnected. And, you know, the first day was a little bit difficult. You know, like, you know, just kind of stir crazy a little bit. And uh, the day was great there. And uh, by the second day, it got a little bit easier. And then by the third day, it was like I didn't even really think about it. I didn't even want it. You know, this thing I thought I had to have, I must have. And these th things aren't evil in nature. It's just, you know, what is the Lord trying to talk to me? And, and am I too concerned and busy with something that he can't speak to me? And so obviously by design, they designed the weekend to be that. So you can get away. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I told this to the first service that I went there asking the Lord some very specific things. God, I need an answer on this. God, I need an answer on this. I need a vision for this, Lord. And I need, you know, just kind of lined out what I wanted the Lord to speak to me on. And he gave, 
He answered none of that for me, by the way. He gave me no answers on the like the three or four things I wanted to ask him for. However, all he did was give me a revelation of who he is. He gave me a revelation of me being his son and he is my father and how much he just simply loves me. And looking back, hindsight, that's exactly what I needed in that moment. I needed to understand the Father's love for me. And so I surrendered my stuff, and and I went, and it was exactly what I needed. The definition of surrender, I love this, is the action of yielding one's person or giving up the possession of something, especially into the power of another. I love this. It's yielding yourself or something into the power of someone else. If you think about this in military terms, right, surrender is, a, is kind of a bad thing, right? It means that you have been beaten. You've been overthrown by your enemy. If you think about war movies that I'm sure we've seen, Saving Private Ryan and, and the like, uh, there's moments where these militaries, they're just at battle, right? It's just like the heat of battle. And, and as it progresses, right, you, you remember in the movies where, where we would storm the beach and then we would get a little bit further inland, a little bit further, a little further, and then we would be standing over this foxhole or the trenches and we're just standing there and there's just a couple of guys left. And if they know what's good for them, they will put down their weapon, they will stop fighting and say, please do not kill me. Please, I surrender. Do not kill me. And if you're lucky, they won't, and they'll take you as a prisoner of war. But sometimes that doesn't happen, right? The reality of war. Surrender, when it comes to our relationship with Christ, has nothing to do with that. It's not that you have been beaten into submission. It's that you're surrendering your life. You recognize that your way of life and your path that you are on is not a good path. Your own plans, you abandon your plans and you take your life and you put it into the hands of another person and trust that they know what's best for you more than you know what's best for you. You trust that they can take care of you better than you can take care of yourself. That's surrender. It's saying that, listen, God, it's your will from here on out and not my will from here on out. It's surrendering and letting go of anything and everything that God says is not my best for you. It's letting it go. It's letting it go. That's, that's surrender. And that's what the Father, that's, that's what Jesus modeled for us here just a few minutes ago, what we read. Not my will, but your will be done. It's not easy. Surrender is giving up your rights. Man, do we live in a culture that's rights everything. You know, rights for, rights for women, men, rights for this group and that group, and rights for the trees and rights for this sandwich. How dare you kill this meat sandwich or whatever it is, you know. Like so rights for everything, you know. And uh, the economy in God's world, the, 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 the system in which he wants us to live is not that. It's contrary to that. It's to surrender your rights. It's to surrender opportunity that you know is awesome here, but you know it's not for you because it's not the will of God. It's maybe surrendering an attitude. It's letting go of everything. What does a surrendered life look like? Well, it obviously starts with salvation. If you've not trusted in Jesus as the one true living God, that's where you need to start. You need to give your life to him and trust in him for your salvation. Because outside of a relationship with Jesus, you are forever destined to a place called hell, which is separation from the Lord and eternal agony. Right? Because of sin, that is our destination. All of us. Every single one of us. You can't be good enough to earn a different way or a different path. All of us are destined for that path. Jesus understood that, and that's why he came and he died on the cross. He was the ultimate sacrifice for all of us, for every person that's ever to come uh, to be born into existence here on the earth. He covered all of our sin, and all we have to do is receive a free gift. All we do is surrender our lives to him. You trust in him as the only way that you're ever going to get to heaven. A surrendered life looks like open and honest conversation from that point on for the rest of your life. You just be serious and, and open with the Lord and honest. When's the last time you, you, you cried out to the Lord and said, God, I am dealing with lust and I can't shake it? When's the last time we prayed and said, God, I am dealing with my pride and I can't lay it down? 
I'm dealing with greed and I just got to have these things and this, this society and, and the accolades, all the stuff, Lord. I just, I simply can't, I'm struggling with it. When's the last time we had real conversation? Man, as Christians, man, sometimes we try to stuff it down and act as if the Lord doesn't see it or doesn't know it, right? That we're dealing with it, yet he knows it all and he just wants us to speak to him. A surrendered life is one that, that believes this book from cover to cover, Right? From the front, page one, to the page in the, the very back of the book. And sometimes we live this life as like, well, I like, pay, I like these pages right here. This is, this is a fun section here, you know, what the Lord gives me. But this, one's, this page is difficult. I'm, I, I just tear it out. I, you know. I don't like the back. The back is a little bit scary. They talk about all kinds of craziness and stuff. But, I, you know, it's like we pick and choose, you know. And not just believe in the Bible, not just pointing out and saying, yeah, that's up on the shelf over there, and I believe it. It's God's word, but at living it out, putting it into action. That's what a surrendered life looks like. You know, maybe you're in here and, and you've given your life to Christ, and uh, maybe you're halfway surrendered to him. You know, Lord, you know, you trusted him for salvation. You got ten things you're holding on to, and you're like, Here, here's four. Okay, here's five. But I'm going to hold on to these, right? These, these are very comfortable, and I like these things about me. And, uh, oh, we'll go back and we'll pick up that one that we like to mess around with. And then a couple, oh, we need to put that one back down. And, but but this, is, this is mine, right? This is mine. We're halfway surrendered, and we're missing out on this life that God has for us. Are, are you halfway surrendered in here. You know, I want to illustrate this by the story of the pig and the chicken. Maybe you've heard the story, I don't know, but pig and the chicken, they're hanging out, right? They're buds. They've been on the farm. They grew up together. You know, they're talking about the horse. You remember the horse did this, man? That's crazy. The rooster, man, he was, you know, they're just shooting the breeze. They're walking down the street, just hanging out. They happen upon this restaurant. <clears throat> restaurant had a sign in the window that said, Wanted bacon and eggs. So the chicken, Looks at the pig, they look at the sign, they look, look, look at each other again, they look at the sign. Chicken speaks up, he's like, let's do it, let's go in here, man, this restaurant owner, he needs some help, we can help him. Let's go, what are we waiting on? Pig looks at the chicken, they look at each other, pig finally speaks up and says, man, I, I, just, I just don't think I can do it. Why not, man, this is easy, let's go do this. Pig said, man, because they will sacrifice me, all you got to do is make a contribution. <laughs> That's all you got to do. Like, you would, you would, I would have to surrender my life for them to have bacon, and you make eggs every day. This is easy for you, right? You just, you know, plop a couple out and hand it to them, right? No big deal. Some of us in our Christian life are just like the chicken. We just want, we can, we make contributions to the Lord, and yet we don't surrender our whole being to him. We're holding on to it. Why, why do you think people resist surrender? I think because maybe sometimes we're afraid of what the Lord is going to take from us. We think there's some comfort that we have to have or, or man, I just can't let this go. We're afraid of what the Lord will take from us. Or maybe we're afraid of what we'll look like to the world or our friends, family. But the reality is that God knows you better than even you know yourself. And he knows what you need and what you don't need. And what we've got to do is just take our whole self and say, okay, Lord, here you go. You and I will never become the person we're designed to be in God. This life of abundance that he talks about will never have it while we're simply holding on to sin and the old nature and our old self. Right? Right? We're missing out on true life. We're missing out on the things that he has for us. There's this documentary uh, on Netflix called Tidying Up. Anybody seen Tidying Up? Anybody? Some of you? Maybe? Maybe not? It's an interesting yeah, documentary. This, uh, her name's Marie Kondo, and uh, she's a Japanese organizing consultant, all right? And uh, she's written four books on the topic, and people are going nuts over her. It's just kind of a crazy, crazy documentary, and they got multiple seasons and series. And so what she does is she is hired by families to, to come into their, ho their home and to create order out of the chaos that is our house, right? 
Uh, many of us probably, you don't have to raise your hand, but maybe your house is like this, right? It's just lots and full of stuff and closets are packed full and you're like stuffing stuff in and then it spills into the garage and now you can't park in your garage anymore because you got all the stuff in there. And then you got to move over to a storage unit because your garage is now full and the attic's full and so now you got a storage unit. And so I'm not pointing fingers at anybody in here. So if you're feeling guilty, that's the Lord speaking to you uh, and your organization. I'm just kidding. Uh, anyway, she's hired to help people and what she does is she goes to the home and she goes category for category, right? And so let's take your clothes. So think about this in your own mind. Go to your closet, right? Everybody's envisioning your closet. And what she has you do is take all of your clothes and pile them up on the bed, right? And so obviously there's a mound of clothes. Um, And she says that what she wants you to do is go item for item. You pick up an item and if it doesn't, if, if it sparks joy in you, like, man, this is a great shirt. I love these pants, right? You're going to keep that, right? But if you pick up an item and that doesn't happen, you're supposed to discard it, right? You're supposed to let it go. And she goes category for category. And she helps people organize and, uh, and bring order through getting rid of the junk that you don't need. Getting rid of the stuff that you've been holding on to for some reason. And who knows why, Right? But we've been holding on to it. And, and so many of us, maybe our house is overflowing and, and we got all this stuff and we're holding on to it and all this. And so I was watching this one episode, this couple, they were, they were reluctant and hesitant about doing it. And so they, start, they finally say, okay, they, they go. And, and so she's got her pile of clothes in here and then he's got his pile of clothes over here, right? And so he picks up a shirt. He's like, oh man, this is my favorite shirt. I've had this since college. And so she's like bickering back at him. You need to throw that shirt away, man. That shirt's nasty. That shirt's got holes in it. It stinks. No, this is the most comfortable shirt ever. It's my, the greatest thing. And so they're back and forth and, and arguing and having resentment towards each other. And what's really, really interesting is as the, as the episode progresses, what you find out is as they deal with the junk, you, you know where I'm going with this, right? As they deal with the junk they actually began to have less stress. As they go into the garage and clean out not just their stuff, but like he had like bags and bags and bags of just trash, right? Boxes full of cables and stuff you've never touched for three years, you know? Um, As they began to deal with that, they actually found out that they had more love for each other, weirdly. As they went into the kitchen and threw away the spatula that has that ever like crusty stuff on the top that you can't get off, you know, but for some reason we're still holding on to it and it's still in the drawer. As they went and dealt with the junk, they had more joy and less resentment towards each other. It was crazy. And it all starts with this moment of saying, you know, I love this spatula a lot. And I've been holding on to it for about 30 years, but I'm going to throw this thing away. Or I love this shirt, right? I've been holding on to this since college. But you know what? I'm going to get rid of it. In that moment, it's like, whew. Your eyes open up, and you realize that there's this whole life and this whole level of joy you have never experienced, and you can't simply see beyond your junk. That's surrender, letting it go. Listen, when we surrender something here on this earth, this is a temporary moment in in eternity. It is here and gone. The Bible says that life is like a vapor, flash in the pan. And if we will just understand that when we surrender here, it's for eternal gain. It's to gain everything in the Lord and also to have an abundant life here while we're here. Gary Thomas in his book called uh, Seeking the Face of God has this quote. He says, Christian health is not defined by how happy we are, how prosperous or healthy we are, or even by how many people we've led to the Lord this past year. Christian health is ultimately defined by how sincerely we wave our flag of surrender. That's Christian health. Surrendering to the Lord. So, turn me to Luke 9. Let's look at what it looks like to um, surrender our lives to him and what it looks like to be a follower of Jesus. We're going to be in Luke 9, just so just flip back a few pages if in your Bible. It will be up here on the screen as well. How do we surrender How do we do this? Starting in verse number 23, this is Jesus speaking. He said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple, 
How many of you in here want to be his disciple? Raise your hand. Don't be ashamed in this moment. Raise it up high, big and tall. Some people are like, oh, yeah, I do. All of us do. We all want to be his disciple. That's why we're here. It's why we're at church, to worship Jesus. And so we can put courage into one another, so we can hear his word taught, so we can sing songs to him, so we can go out and live the rest of the week like we're supposed to. To share the gospel. Man, we all want to be his disciple. If you want to be my disciple, you must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self? What does it take to be a disciple? Number one, you have to deny yourself. Looking at the original language when you study this out, it basically means to refuse to give thought to or to ex express concern for, to disregard, to pay no attention to yourself. If you want to be my disciple, you must pay no attention to yourself. If you want to be my disciple, you must refuse to give thought to yourself. Whew, that's heavy, right? That's the cost. That's the cost. This doesn't mean that you're changing your personality or you're changing your uniqueness. No, the Lord's created you on purpose, and, and he's got a plan. You're made in his image, but it's, but it's surrendering your will to him. It's not just giving up some things, right? The Lord's not saying you can't go through the drive through at Dairy Queen, and you can't order your Reese Peanut Butter Cup Blizzard with extra Reese Peanut Butter Cups, right? That's called keto, or that's called Whole30, right? That's a diet, right? Now, the Lord may ask you to do that. I don't know. I'm not, you know, not telling you what to do, but he's wanting... He's wanting all of you. He's wanting you to put him at the center of every decision that you ever make in your entire life. That's what he wants. That's what he wants. You know, I, I, I really don't like Christian cliche statements and sayings. They kind of drive me crazy. But I'm, this one is actually very, very appropriate. But let go and let God just kind of drives me crazy. I, I don't know. That's probably bad. I should like that. I'm sorry. Just a moment of transparency, but it's so appropriate here. That's what he's telling us to do is to let go and to let God, right? To surrender. Anybody seen the, uh, the fail videos on YouTube or Facebook of the rope swing fail videos? Anybody seen that? Those things are hilarious. I absolutely love them, right? If you have ever been on a rope swing and you're, you know, maybe as a child or in teenage years or even as an adult, I, no judgment here. I love them, you know. Um, there's like two rules, right? Hold on tight. And let go at the appropriate time. That's, that's the two rules. Like, it's super easy, right? And so these fail videos, these people are up in a tree or on a rock or on the shore, wherever they're at, you know, and uh, they got a death grip on that rope, right? And they're just holding on for dear life. And they're being talked into. Some people have to be pushed and some let, you know, don't go because they're scared. But finally, they get up the, the urge to, let, to jump off, right? To, to just, you know, and the, so they're, here they are. They're out in the middle of the air, right? Whee! And there's this really important moment, really important moment, right? This pendulum is swinging to its, to its stopping point, and there's this moment where you got to let it go. But for some reason, people want to stay in control, and they don't let go. So what happens, man? They're like, oh, back, back to where they came from, and they slam into the tree, or they drag across the rocks or the shore. It's painful to watch, but I laugh because, I don't know, I need to talk to the Lord about that, I'm sure. It's hilarious, right? <laughs> Each and every day that you wake up, it's like a rope swing. When you get up in the morning, you put on your shoes, you brush your teeth, it's like you grabbing that rope and holding on tight. And you swing out every morning and you say, I'm yours, Lord. And you may, be, it may feel like you're falling in, in air and you haven't experienced that before, and you don't know what's going to happen when you hit the water, and you just simply don't know, that's denying yourself, and that is what's called surrender and letting him go, letting it go, letting yourself go, and trusting in him. That's the lifestyle he, he's asking us to live. And whatever life calls for today, it's a no to myself, and it's a yes to you. God, for the next 30 minutes, it's a no to me, and it's a yes to you. And for the next, okay, that 30 minutes is over. Okay, this next 30 minutes, right, these increments, right, thinking about literally every single decision that you make, it's a no to yourself, and it's a yes to me. 
It's I'm not living for myself anymore thing, right? A couple of verses if you want to write this down. Philippians 2.3, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Galatians 2.20, for I've been crucified with Christ, yet I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Deny yourself. Number two, take up your cross. What does this mean, right? If you were to take up your cross in this time, these times back in the, uh, the Bible times, it was a Roman uh, torturing device, right? It's a death device. And if you had to carry your cross, what that means is that you were uh, a criminal, right? Judicially, you were certified as a criminal, right? Your paperwork's out, stamp, criminal, right? You are now going to die, and not only are you going to die, you're going to do it in a very terrible way terrible, torturous way. You have official opposition against you. Carrying your cross means certain death and certain suffering. And if you were to bear your cross, right, picking up the beam just as Christ did, throwing it over your shoulder, and you were literally marching yourself to your death, all the while you are being ridiculed and mocked on your way. That's what take up your cross means. Taking up your cross Each and every day. Sometimes we think, we kind of get this mixed up. We think that like, man, if I'm going through a difficult time, that's my cross to bear. Or or a a strained relationship or an illness that you're going through. Or or man, you know, a a thankless job, right? I stubbed my toe this morning and I'm bleeding and bled through my favorite socks. You know, this is just my cross to bear. You know, this is my cross, you know. Has nothing to do with that, right? This has everything to do with saying no to yourself and dying to yourself each and every day. That's what it means. So let me ask you these questions in closing. Are you surrendered to the Lord? I'm asking myself those questions, so I'm in the same boat. Am I surrend- completely and totally surrendered to the Lord in everything? Are you willing to follow him to the point of, of losing, losing friends? Are you willing to follow him and surrender to him to the point of even alienation from your family? You're willing to to surrender to him to the point of losing your reputation. Now, I'm not saying those things will happen to you. They may not. But if ever the moment came where you had to make a decision, whether you're at work, something comes up, or you're here or there, and you have to choose, what are you going to choose? Are you going to choose to hold on to the old, or are you going to let go? And choose and trust the Lord. What do you what do you hold on to? Ask yourself this question. What is it that you're holding on to? Maybe it's not even a sin. Maybe it's just simply not the will of God for you. You know what it is. If you're in here and you've never given your life to Christ, your first surrender point is to surrender to Jesus for your salvation. That's where you need to start. Maybe you need to surrender your reputation. And, and we've seen many, many people give their life to Christ over the past couple of months. And, and maybe your next step is to, to be baptized. But for some reason, you're afraid or you're ashamed. And, and I don't know, you're afraid of your reputation. What do people think about me if I get baptized? Surrender that. Come talk to us, man. Let's, let's take that next step in your faith and get baptized. Maybe you need to surrender your plans. What does God want you to do? Right? I mean, you know, I talked about it before. I love to know what I'm doing. What does God want me to do? Maybe it's a money thing. Maybe we need to help people that are in need around us and not consume everything ourselves. Maybe you need to surrender your time. Maybe you think, man, I don't have time to get in a life group. I don't have time to be around a community of, of, of Christians, and I don't have time to read my Bible. I don't have time to pray. Yeah, yeah, you do. You do. You know, surrender that time to him. Be with them. Maybe you need to surrender your home. Remember, Arthur talked about it last week. Let's open our homes to those that don't know Christ. Let's open our homes to, to even our brothers and sisters that need, need a meal or need somebody just to love on them and hang out with them. What would happen if you surrendered your life to Christ? What would happen? Well, this last verse, Luke 9, 24, says this. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. It's a temporary surrender for an eternal gain. So what are you guys holding on to? Man, let's let it go. Let's surrender our lives totally to the Lord.